the government agrees that the presence of women on corporate boards brings a different perspective. I would remind you that Bill 473 proposes a simple but effective change to current legislation dealing with our public financing. More specifically, this bill aims to offer Canadians a balanced representation of men and women on boards in Crown corporations. This is a corrective measure that would enable us to meet our objectives with respect to equality on the boards of Canadian corporations. Uh, Crown corporations. Now, this issue isn't something that's new to Canadian Parliament. Be it in the House, the Senate, or in committee, the fact that uh, too few women are leading our uh, political institutions and Canadian corporations remains an important, significant problem that we need to focus on if we want to, to be able to claim that we live in a society where all rights are equal. The subject of my bill. And I will remind you, it affects only Crown Corporation and not private corporations. Targets equal representation because women in Canadian society are taxpayers, as men are. They are, if you will, shareholders in Crown Corporations, as men are. Their taxes pay for the existence of these Crown Corporations, so it is very normal that as shareholders in these corporations, they have the right to, to be represented proportionately to their demographic weight in our society. The most recent data show that more than 2,000 Canadians currently hold positions in more than 200 Crown corporations, organizations, boards, and commissions throughout the country. Of all of these positions available on boards and organizations, only 27% of senior management positions are held by women. The situation is is worse for chairmen of the board. Figures currently show that only 16 of 84 chairs are women. We are unfortunately far off uh, balanced representation, which reflects demographics in Canada, and which offers uh, our women uh, these professional opportunities to flourish. Now, my bill indirectly wants to put an end to, to uh, these uh, stereotypes by imposing a gradual quota for representation among the genders on boards for Crown corporations. People responsible for nominations will have to show willingness and creativity to broaden their recruitment methods and to open up their recruitment uh, basins to non-traditional ways. Colleagues must also understand that this choice of selecting quotas is based on studies by experts and based on other studies and consultations of professional organizations. This reflection is based on results obtained in other countries where the problem with representation was addressed one way or another. Another example, obvious example, calling for uh, the implementation of quotas is uh, the situation and the failure of voluntary measures in Norway. Norway was the first country to legislate gender equality on boards. It did so in 2003. The legislation came into force in January 2004. Now, the government had uh, started off with a voluntary approach with quotas for the private sector of 40%. It was under the threat of adopting binding legislation if the representation or they hadn't established a balanced representation by July 2005. A study conducted by the Norwegian Institute of Statistics showed that only 13% of companies had respected their voluntary quotas and that women held only 16% of positions on boards. Norway therefore extended its legislation to, to limited companies with a coming into force date of January 2006. This case is proof that voluntar a voluntary approach simply doesn't work. So quotas are a real tool that could be used to achieve better, a, ba a better balance on our public institutions. It's the government's duty to look to effective measures to achieve this balance and remedy this injustice. 
the imposition of quotas has not caused any confusion or injustice or any kind of problem in the jurisdictions where quotas have been used. This is why the quota solution appears to me to be the best approach for boards in Crown Corporations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for the opportunity to voice my concerns about Bill C-473. This bill put forward by the Honourable Member opposite would use legislative quotas to force the government to balance the representation of women and men on the boards of directors of crime corporations. The government agrees that the presence of women on corporate boards brings a different perspective and an important voice to crime corporations. However, Mr. Speaker, legislative quotas come with many potential problems, and that's why we cannot support this bill. For example, they are rigid and arbitrary thresholds that could get in the way of appointing people who reflect Canada's diversity in terms of linguistic, regional, and employment equity representation, including women. Legislative quotas could also result in the potential disruption of commercial operations and good corporate government, governance. For instance, gender quotas could restrict or limit the pool of potential candidates for a vacant position, leaving the board unable to meet quorum while the minister searches for an appropriate person. In short, the problems with imposed quotas far outweigh the benefits. The voluntary approach is a more flexible way of meeting the government's objectives of appointing the most suitable candidate based on a number of requirements and competencies. At the same time, we believe that taking concrete actions to advance more women into leadership, into leadership roles across the country and economy. For example, working in partnership with private sector firms, we supported the work of the Canadian Board Diversity Council. This group is educating the business community on the value of board diversity. It is also equipping a diversity of board-ready, high-potential candidates, including women, with the tools to pursue board positions. We understand that Canada is better off when the talents and skills of women and girls are represented in every sector of society, in government at every level, and from the grassroots all the way to the boardroom. And we know that the more we break down barriers and inspire young women and girls to pursue a wide variety of career options, the stronger Canada will be. Where we differ from the Honourable Member opposite is that we believe in creating sustainable pathways to success rather than legislating it. That's why we do not support Bill C-473 with its legislative quotas as the best way to achieve gender balance on the boards of Crown Corporations. The voluntary way is the more effective way, and we believe the better way for Canadian women, Crown Corporations, and Canada's economy to succeed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support the spirit and principle of the McGill as I believe gender parity is a goal we should pursue. That said, there are some questions to be addressed in committee regarding the scope and implementation of this bill. One such question, and I think it important to have it raised, is whether the legislation goes far enough in that the number of women on boards may not be an accurate indicator in and of itself of women's progress more broadly. In other words, and to illustrate with an example, just because we have gender parity on a board heading a science agency does not mean we are doing enough to encourage women to enter and remain in the sciences or that women are equitably represented in decisions regarding science policy. Certainly, I share the hope that if more women are on boards, these boards and agencies will adopt policies and perspectives that are inclusive and sensitive to the need for minority representation. But we might wonder whether there are other metrics to be considered in this regard such as compensation and the promotion of women relative to their merit counterparts. Another such question, and I think it is interesting to note that the bill comes from the NDP, which generally takes very progressive stances in this regard, is that this bill seems not to contemplate how a transgender individual may count or wish to be counted for gender parity purposes. Simply put, there may be consequences to ambiguity in the legislation, as it does reinforce a gender binary to which not all ascribe. Moreover, and perhaps most importantly, the bill seems to be silent on the matter of sanctions. That is, it does not outline penalties or remedial action for failure to adhere to the objectives outlined in the bill. Indeed, it specifically states, and I quote, les actes de conseil d'administration de la société d'État They are not invalid in their constitution. In other words, any decision made by a board without the designated gender representation is not invalid if the board does not meet the appropriate gender representation requirements. This clause would seem to lessen the strength of the bill, Mr. Speaker, and I think we ought to investigate whether we might have some sort of mechanism whereby we do not merely say, as this bill does, and importantly so, 
that failure to meet the required parity is just business as usual and we're sorry. And ultimately, without any consequence for failure to meet the quotas, this entire initiative seemingly may become an exercise in symbolism, which again is important, but which I'm sure the honorable member who introduced the bill did not intend this to be the principal impact. There are multiple approaches to this question, and one which I believe ought to be considered, though again this perspective might be informed uh, through debate and in committee, is whether we set a goal 50% parity in the statute and mandate sanctions when a figure of less than 40% is achieved. While I agree that 40% is not parity, a requirement of 40% with a 50% goal is in my view preferable to a goal set of 50% with a requirement of 0%, which is what the bill would appear to mandate in its current form. We've already mentioned that in Quebec, the Act governing Crown Corporation stipulates that the government of Quebec establish a policy with the objective that boards for Crown Corporations have equally be equally represented by men and women. Following this provision, there is another provision that the boards of all Crown Corporations be made up of members whose identity reflect Quebec society as a whole. And cultural community representation ought to be in C-473 as well. Surely, from Quebec's experience and international experience as well in this regard, we can better establish how effective such a law is at achieving parity and where the pitfalls are. If it turned out, for example, that to comply with the guidelines, some board would simply reduce the overall number of members, but that this would have a prejudicial impact on the work of such a board, we might want to reconsider if in some cases a ministerial exemption might be appropriate. Again, this will be a matter in which hearing from Quebec's experience would greatly inform and assist parliamentarians as we address this issue. As I close, Mr. Speaker, I want to applaud my colleague from Charlesbrook, Haute St. Charles, for addressing an issue of women's rights wherein the government's leadership has been wanting and where Parliament has a distinct role to play. There are many other concerns, both domestic and international, that time does not permit me to address including women in armed conflict, pay equity, matrimonial, real property, gender, budgeting, access to comprehensive medical care, and the like, on which I would encourage the government to adopt a more progressive and inclusive approach. Until then, I hope more private members' bills such as this will seek to advance the equality clause that arguably the government has abandoned. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.